Joining me now for more, former Assemblyman Leroy Jones Jr., who is a partner of 1868 Public Affairs and Republican strategist Bill Spadia, who is the president of Building the New Majority. Okay, gentlemen, I want some reactions to this new legislative <laughs> map. First, from you, Bill. Well, I, a couple things. I think, first of all, it's important to note that even though it was the Democratic map that won the day, the reality is that when you look at the, what the Republicans proposed, I think what their strategy was, knowing that Professor Rosenthal was very likely going to go with the Democratic map just based on some of his public comments about wanting to keep legislative continuity, which I hear as incumbent protection. Um, they went a little bit too far, the Republican side, when they pitted six incumbent senators against each other. And I think by going so far to one side, kind of brought the Democrats a little bit to the center. I think uh, we've had a few Democrats displaced by this map. Senator Gergenti just uh, was forced to resign. Dick Cody now has a more competitive district. We're we're competitive in the 14th and in the second. So all in all, uh, it's the voters that matter. And I think we're going to be just fine with this map. Democratic map, Republican map, how did it turn out? For well, you? I think it, uh, you know, turns out to give the Democrats a distinct advantage, Brenda. Uh, you know, that's that's pretty clear. I mean, this is the second, uh, you know, attempt uh, in, t in 10 years, uh, you know, to do this. Democrats won 10 years ago, uh, you know, which created a uh, Democratic majority that exists today. It's going to be preserved by virtue of the outcome of, uh, you know, this, this last uh, you know, session. And, uh, you know, as Bill mentioned, uh, you know, it does create some, uh, some nuances, uh, you know, and it, this happens every 10 years. Uh, you know, Senator Gigenti comes out, uh, you know, Nellie Poe goes in, uh, you know, Dick Cody gets into a more competitive district, but Dick Cody has, uh, you know, tremendous name recognition and should carry that district. There's no incumbent, uh, you know, involved there. So, uh, you know, we should see, uh, you know, pretty much a, uh, a solid, uh, you know, Democratic uh, majority coming out of this exercise. Uh, you know, in the upcoming elections. I, I think it's kind of unfortunate, though, that that's been the position of a lot of the Democrats, especially the ones on the committee, that it was a game of, can we draw a map to preserve our majority? And I really think that's think really that in the face of the voters. Oh, I think that's absolutely well, what they well, wanted absolutely. to do. No that, doubt that, about that it. That goes sure. into it. But, uh, but Bill, where, where, where uh, the Republicans fell short was, uh, you know, their strategy was so extreme, you know, when they, you know, began to clump, uh, you know, incumbent senators against each other. And, uh, you know, it was a map that was, uh, you know, baseless uh, in, its in, in its intent, uh, you know, and reckless, uh, you know, in its, uh, and in its I don't position. Know if it was reckless. So, but <laughs> it, it led to uh, a more, you know, common sense approach, you know, that came out from the Democrats and, uh, and obviously I, the 11th member, uh, Dr. Rosenthal, you know, uh, well, you know acquiesced to uh, what the Democrats did. With all due respect, I think we knew where he was going to vote from go. And I think the Republicans had to play tough. They had to play hardball. They had to say, look, you know, we kind of know where you're going to go. We're going to bring the Democrats more to the center. And I think that uh, it cost a few Democratic incumbents uh, uh, their seat. And you some, know, of the some of the some of the commissioners on the Republican too. side that I know walked away, you know, with their legs, you know, their tail between their legs, <laughs> and uh, you know, were feeling, you know, pretty pretty defeated. Well, uh, you, you, know, never the liked, you never <laughs> like to lose, and if you if you draw the key, black, if you draw Bill, black and that white, that is a key word. <laughs> right? Lose. Okay. <laughs> now, let's talk about this. There was some controversy over the fact that the governor was at the hotel during right. the negotiation. So your reaction to that? Well, you know, the governor came out and said, I actually think it's a good thing that the governor was involved. I mean, let's face it. The governor has set forth a very aggressive agenda of changing politics in this state by changing the government. He's talking about cutting spending dramatically, reforming pension, and the governor knows that this is about results. And the only way he's going to get the results that he got elected to put in place is to have changes at the legislative level. So, you know, uh, to a point that Leroy made earlier, I, I don't think this guarantees any return of the Democratic majority. I, I think you've got folks like Senator Whelan who are in trouble down in uh, Atlantic County. You've got a that's few always, of those that's folks. District 2 I think is Linda always Green competitive district. in trouble. She's, got, she's running against a virtual folk hero. Well, since the governor in was Rich so heavily Kankas, involved, so. I mean, well, does, is it a negative impact since so many Democrats? Is it, is this well, it's unusual. I mean, in, 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 in recent time, you know, no governor has ever engaged himself like this. But this has been Chris Christie from you know, day one. You know, it's uh, you know, you're in your face. I'm, you know, I'm in the game. Uh, you know, no matter whose game it is or he's, what game it is. But could it have a negative impact it. on him? I. Uh, uh, no, because, you know, that's what he, you know, in his mind, that's what he wants to do, you know, for his party. In to, his to, mind? To, yes, in his mind. <laughs> only well, in his mind. I, um, he, you know, he wants to engage in a way that, uh, you know, says, you know, I'm there for my team. And, uh, you know, he did so in a, um, you know, in a very aggressive, uh, you know, almost bully type because he, you know, came well, down unannounced 
uh, you know, as you know, he typically does, and uh, you know, he uh, you know injected his input. Well, I don't think uh, you know a, much I think that's to a uh, rough characterization, though, to say that was a bully type action. I mean, let's face it: the governor <laughs> is just following what the voters he's mandated him to do. He's a rough kind of guy, do. Bill. You but know that, that isn't why he showed up. He showed up because he's got a vested interest in the map being as fair as possible. And actually, if you listen to the the public statements that the governor made after the map was voted on, he said, "Well, at least it's better than the last map we had." So. I, you know, I, I think kinda, the good news is it looks I like kinda, we're going to stay out I kind of court. think that it was more theatrics than anything else because <laughs> I think at the, in, the, in, the, in the back of the governor's mind, he'd like things the way that they are because he couldn't be who he is without things being the way that they are. Boy, what that's that a stretch, mean? though. I don't, I don't even know. That's a what whole other show to talk about that. Elections uh, coming up. It means uh, we're going to have a mean, more competition. And I, I agree. I agree. With, I agree. There's going to be competition. How about that? But I agree that there's going to be democratic victories, and uh, you know, I don't think there's going to be uh, you know much of a change uh, you know with respect to uh, the current configuration of the legislature. I think there is a very good chance the Republicans are only five seats down in the state Senate, and if I were calling it, I'd say that's where a lot of the money is going to be invested, the time is going to be invested, and let's face it, map or no map, this is about turnout, it's about voter participation. The party that out-organizes at the local level is going to win these elections. Well said. Next. Bring us back. We'll make a bet, and <laughs> we'll see who wins when we come back. <laughs> You're going to stay with us anyway. Fair Next, enough. the race for the White House officially kicks off with President Obama's announcement for a re-election bid. But who will be the contenders? More when New Jersey Now continues. Stay tuned. Joining me again, Democratic strategist Leroy Jones Jr., who is a partner of 1868 Public Affairs, and Republican strategist Bill Spadia, who is the president of Building the New Majority. Gentlemen, we talk about President Obama winning his first election bid with what really was a grassroots campaign. Mm -hmm. And do you think that same strategy is going to work this time around, starting with you this time? Well, it, you know, it, it's going to have to, uh, you know, go in that uh, in that direction. Uh, you know, he had such a successful, uh, you know, campaign from a grassroots standpoint. Uh, you know, it touched, you know, all areas and all segments of, uh, you know, all communities, you know, regardless of, uh, you know, where you were. And, uh, you know, it proved to be a very, very historic, uh, you know, election and a historic victory for him. Uh, you know, at th that's going to be the approach, as I said, uh, you know, th with this upcoming uh, election. It's going to be a little bit different because, obviously, he's an incumbent now. And, uh, you know, with incumbency, uh, you know, you've her inherited a little bumps in the road along the way. Uh, you know, I don't think there will be, uh, you know, such a, uh, uh, a huge victory as, you know, we saw, uh, you know, last time out. But I do believe that, uh, you know, Barack Obama will be reelected successfully as president. Speaking of huge we're talking about estimates of about a billion dollar campaign. Amazing. I, it's amazing. It could possibly run I, up to that. Right, I think it's funny. Bumps in the road. I, here's what we call bumps <laughs> in the road. The president has to run on his record like any incumbent Absolutely. will have to. And, you know, you look at some of the things that have happened over the past two years. Let's take it back to 2008. It was an historic election, the first African-American president. And some of that shine has really rubbed off over the last two years. And the first indicator was the historic election of a Republican Congress in 2010. So there's been a rejection of the president's message. Now, clearly, he still has some personal popularity, and there's a real discrepancy in the polling, but where he's going to have a lot of trouble, number one on his record, when you look at there's been a 90% increase in gas prices since the last day that George Bush was in office to uh, to today, going from $1.81 a gallon to three fifty seven. You've literally had millions of foreclosures. This president has spent more money than any other president in history. So he's got to run on his record, and I think that's going to be problematic. You know, one thing the Democrats are going to have to worry about is in the past 22 years, over 22 years, this is now the lowest point for Democratic affiliation in terms of when you talk to voters and say, well, what party do you, do you identify with? It's now at 31%, which is the lowest in 22 years. So, you know, he's got that. His numbers are upside down in Florida. He's having trouble in Ohio. If you look at all the recent polling, it's about the issues. It's about the economy. It's about unemployment. And no matter how you slice it, one in 10 10 Americans are still out of work. I think Meanwhile, we've seen some... Though, a new poll suggests President Obama needs to get back on track. Fairleigh Dickinson University's public mind poll found mm -hmm. 
57% of New Jersey voters believe the country is on the wrong track. The survey also gave Mr. Obama 47% approval rating, while 42% disapprove. What's your reaction to that, Leroy? Well, uh, you know, obviously, uh, you know, as Bill points out, you know, there are some, uh, you know, some issues that come along with incumbency. There's, you know, there's uh, in inherited issues that uh, the president had to deal with from, uh, you know, from the Bush administration. Uh, you know, there's successes, uh, you know, as you see some, uh, you know, changes in the economy that, you know, seem to be ticking up. There's been reform in the bank industry has been reform in the housing industry you know the, you'll, you'll clearly see you know some improvement in the job market as we move forward uh, you know as we get close to uh, you know election year 2012 uh, but you know one of the things that uh, you know bill did not mention is um, you know when people you know, well he did mention that uh, you know people personally like Barack Obama okay. you know that's something that you know will clearly resonate uh, you know when we get closer to an election the other thing that bill didn't mention was uh, you know who would be uh, you know a potential um, you know, candidate, you know, to well, oppose That's a whole him. other story now, the Republicans put out. Now, 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 right now, right now, okay. well, we can't because he can't tell you who he would, might be. <laughs> okay, he couldn't you tell you, you know, he, that's couldn't, a great he could, could not tell you, you know, with any degree of credibility, you know, who is we, a viable we candidate. Well, I, when you go head to head, when you go, when you go head to head with, you know, anybody, Barack Obama, you know, you know, typically, you know, beats them in a head to head poll. Because well, again, because though, of people trust. If you look at the polls in Florida, he is only only has a slight edge against a generic Republican. That is very Who is problematic. Who is a generic Republican? You know, I don't most know of, if there is such of, a thing as a generic <laughs> Republican. I don't know, but, but the point is, most when you of ask the candidates voters, they recruit. Look, there are there are a lot of great candidates out there. Okay, I think so, so seen, who are got, they? Well, one of the things that you I think I mean? the president <laughs> has to watch for is a strong Republican governor coming out who has proven that he can cut taxes, cut spending. Spending Let's and create some jobs. Names. Okay, we've Mitch heard the names Daniels. of Mitt Romney, Mike Huckabee, uh, Sarah Palin. I think there think are others out Donald there. Trump? I think, well, Donald Trump has certainly uh, made a, a quite a political name for himself over the past few weeks. You know, he's <clears throat> taken some of these issues that were, were really dormant, and now he's making a big stink about it. Where Donald Trump is getting traction, though, is he is saying, I'm speaking for America. I want to know why the Iraqis, after our investment of troops, lives, and trade, Treasure are not giving us discounted oil. I mean, Chris he's Christie speaking says very, he's not running. Do you think he is a viable no. candidate? Oh, he's definitely a viable candidate. No, no he doubt is about not. A, he, Chris he's Christie not a viable is, candidate. Chris, no, absolutely not. Chris Creating Christie is jobs, not presidential. Budget. He has what not created it? one job in New Jersey. <laughs> Wait a minute. He has not created one job in New Jersey. I mean, union halls are uh, unemployment you know, in New are, Jersey are, is are lower full. than the national average. Actually, the governor's got us on the right track. Chris he Christie submitted a budget is that not a billion dollars lower. Has no presidential temper. Uh, you know, he, uh, you know, is, uh, you know, bombastic in, in, in his approaches to things. We talked about his billing tactics. You know, he would not have, you know, any presence in, uh, in, in uh, the, uh, you know, in foreign policy. Uh, you know, he would be... Uh, well, wait a you know, minute. Now, Barack Obama had absolutely no experience. He had served in the Senate for, we could count the days that he had actually served before he Barack became Obama president. Barack Obama is a diplomat. So he had no experience at Chris all. Chris Christie And actually, reckless. because he had no experience, we're now... Now seeing the results. Well, He's I have to indecisive. interrupt you there, and thank you so much for joining us. Yeah. Next, redistricting 101.